Welcome to the uh, presentation, Cloud Foundry for Everyone, today um, given by Myrna and myself. We two are both working for a um, consulting company in Germany called Novatech. And um, as, we only, as we're limited on time today, uh, we only have like 15 minutes for this. Uh, we're not gonna do much more integration uh, <laughs> introduction than that. Uh, if you find out, want to find out, find out more, um, feel free to check, check out our, um, our Twitter handles. Now, the, the reason for giving this talk um, originates a bit of like two years ago um, when I was teaching a, um, a class at a university for uh, cloud native software development. And I knew that most of my students were all new to this container platform microservices world. And I hired two of them to like to do a bit of a um, research and just to, to, to see how they would figure out um, what is Cloud Foundry and, and how can you get access to that without giving any further uh, information, just like to let them run and, and, and see what they come back with. And um, so all, all the path they went through and uh, is, is something we're trying to document with this talk. Now, to be fair, this talk is not, it's not the first time that we're doing this. Um, we have done two, worst, two initial versions of this in the CF Summit uh, during 2019. And um, th today's structure is a little different. So first of all, we are kind of shorter on time. That's why we're going to sacrifice a couple of things that we did back then. So please feel free to watch the videos. Um, in turn, um, the way how you would access or start accessing Cloud Foundry has also changed over the last year in particular. And so for this talk, we want to rather focus on highlighting the new ways of accessing Cloud Foundry, what has, uh, what has been added, um, and we're going to give you both examples um, on that. So when you walk away from this talk, uh, we would like you to know um, where you can get info about Cloud Foundry, what are the basics, how to use the CLI, and most of all, like how you, can you get help if you cannot move any, any further. And, and of course, as I said before, answer the question, what is Cloud Foundry and how can I access that? So for the introduction and uh, basics about Cloud Foundry, I will turn over to my colleague Myrna and um, let her go from there. Okay. Yeah, hello everyone. Thanks, Matthias. So uh, let's now have a look on some basic information about Cloud Foundry. Um, maybe, Matthias, you can help me to go to the next slide. Yes. Thanks. So now if we look at Cloud Foundry from a high-level perspective, seeing it as a black box, uh, what can we see? Uh, we can have a very simplified overview about Cloud Foundry. So we can see two main categories of users interacting with it, the developers and the consumers. The developer brings an application to the platform. The Cloud Foundry platform does something inside it, processes that somehow, and returns back a URL to the consumer, then use the application and consume the application logic. Next slide. Now, if you want to go a little bit more into the details to know how uh, it really works from the inside. So the developer brings a piece of code to the platform uh, using the magical CF push command. Then this application uh, is pushed internally to the platform and a so-called droplet is being created. And the droplet is the application along with the build pack uh, the application along with everything which is needed in order to run it. And if needed, we can bind this application to a database service, a messaging service, and so on, using the CF create service and bind service commands. And the great thing here is that the developer does not have to care about any configuration of connection settings. And finally, uh, a URL uh, will be returned back to the user who can then use the application. And this is kind of the uh, fundamental uh, understanding that you should have before digging more deep 
into the details and trying Cloud Foundry. Thanks. Next slide. Cloud Foundry offers you different options to use it. So you can either use it locally using one of the local installation on your machine, or you can use one of the uh, different public providers, or you can even uh, use uh, one of the hosted options on larger data centers. Next. However, no, no matter where uh, you run Cloud Foundry using uh, it locally in your machine, using one of the uh, different public providers, or even uh, uh, hosting in, on uh, larger data centers, you will always end up seeing this generic API across the different options, which is the Cloud Foundry CLI. And you will uh, have this basic set of Cloud Foundry commands, the CF push in order to push your application to the platform, the CF scale in order to increase and decrease the number of instances of your application, the CF marketplace in order to offer the different services or to, to see the different services uh, offered there, and the CF create and bind services command in order to create a service instance and bind it to your application. And now if you decide to get started, you want to try it out, you want to push your first application to Cloud Foundry. Next. You can find many different uh, community resources which may help you. So there is the Cloud Foundry Slack channel in which you can find help from different users. There's the uh, Cloud Foundry GitHub repository. There's the mailing list the Cloud Foundry Ambassador Program, in which uh, you also find a lot of members who are happy to help you. There's also the Cloud Foundry Twitter channel and Stack Overflow. And uh, also Cloud Foundry offers you different kinds of tutorials and guides, which may help you. And maybe here, Matthias, you can give me the right to share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm out. Thank you. So I'm take yeah. here. So I will just yeah go quickly to the homepage of Cloud Foundry. Here you can find uh, different links for different tutorials and trainings. And if you go with this links uh, with this link here, sorry. You can also find different tutorials about uh, the basic info and having a quick overview about Cloud Foundry. You can also find different tutorials about integrating Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes together. And if you want to try it, you have also different options. And maybe the easiest and best uh, option to start with is using it um, in your browser on Katakoda, or you can even use it, uh, use it uh, locally on your machine or if you are, are not uh, so comfortable with using the uh, Cloud Foundry CLI then you can use the graphical option uh, the Stratus UI which will be available soon and uh, now um, a little bit about Katakoda it's an interactive uh, learning environment where you can create live demos use or try new technologies create uh, training environments and so on it's pretty cool to use and if we go with the start tutorial here link, we are directed to this page where we can start a scenario trying Cloud Foundry. Uh, we have a lot of uh, basic info here, description, we can start the scenario. We will see a different kind of commands here. And if we click the command, it will be directly uh, executed in the terminal here. You can continue till the end and it's pretty cool. I, I advise you just to give it a try. Uh, you can continue, Matthias. I'll just stop sharing. Okay. Well, thanks very much. I mean, um, this is something which I also think is um, is really cool. So I'm, you can see I have it open here on my web page as well. So you log in and, and you can directly start uh, using CF in your in your browser and um, and code away. Now, um, going back to the presentation here, uh, we've seen this. Um, there are also a lot of provider options that would give out a hosted platform with free trial options. This is something we talked about quite a bit in the two previous talks uh, and something we're not going to do today. So these offers change quite a bit from time to time. So I would recommend you also to check this out on, on the website and see what the, uh, what the various providers offer you 
as a free tier to get started. Now, something that has significantly changed um, over the last two years in particular is the integration of Cloud Foundry and, and Kubernetes, which also brings a lot of new options to the table, how you can interact with, with Cloud Foundry. Now, in the beginning, there was only Cloud Foundry, then Kubernetes came in, brought a major disruption to the, to the technology there. And out of that were, came two technologies called Arini and Quartz, one to run your Cloud Foundry apps on Cloud Foundry, and one to basically run Cloud Foundry itself on Kubernetes. Now, I mean, I'm, I meant in Irene, I mean running your apps on, on Kubernetes, like push through Cloud Foundry uh, API. Now, um, kubectf is a resulting um, pro project out of this, which can now be used and accessed uh, very easily. And there's an even newer one, uh, which is called cf for pates which is so new that it even doesn't have like a logo yet. Um, but um, it's very, um, very easy to install and set up. And um, we're going to look at this option right now. So, I mean, the, the major advantage that you can get through this is th there are many more Kubernetes offerings all around than that used to be for playing Cloud Foundry. And the good thing is, I mean, you can pretty much use all of those and just like put Cloud Foundry on top of it and start using that and have that additional developer benefit over um, the abstraction of the Kubernetes layer itself. Now, the, I'm not going to read through all of those. So on the bottom, you can see the major cloud providers. They offer pop public offerings. Uh, most of them will come along with like a free tier um, where you can play around with the cloud resources. And given that, it's pretty easy to spin up a Kubernetes cluster and put something on top. Same goes, local options won't cost you anything. They just might require a bit of like computing power on your machine. So once you have that, there is an excellent list of blogs and tutorials all around. I mean, I'm going to highlight three here, um, who are the main contributors for those things from like Suze, Stark and Wayne and, and Guillaume Bertansu, basically the previous uh, pivotal folks who still uh, invest a lot of time in that. And um, you can get your tutorials for those um, technologies and start, just like start working, uh, working on them. Now, especially you can see here, deploy Cloud Foundry to Google, Kubernetes in 10 minutes. Um, I've just done something similar um, on, on, on my environment. And um, I installed the uh, Cloud Foundry for, for Kubernetes on, on both my local Docker for desktop and on a Kubernetes in, in the Azure environment. And I mean, the, um, the, the behavior just stays exactly the same. So you can see right now, I'm now logged into the environment um, on, um, on, on Azure that I redirect with this um, zip DNS name. So if I do CF apps, I can see I have some apps started in here. Over there, you may or may not be able to see this. You can see the workloads actually running as Kubernetes resources. They are being built as Kubernetes resources. This is something you can see under the cover, but you won't be able to see. Uh, you not basically you don't need to see. Uh, when you interact with this. So over here is your standard Cloud Foundry interface. You can check, for example, your marketplace. Um, I just installed a mini broker there, so you can have access to services and, and you can pretty much build together your Cloud Foundry in your own style. What it takes is basically editing of a YAML file, add a few uh, configuration properties of your environment and you're free to go. So if I, for example, log out of this one now and just like, point the API to another one, this one here, then it will, I will basically have the same environment um, on the Docker desktop of my local machine. So I can't go any deeper into that um, and I will stop it now, but I just wanted to give you an impression. It has become a lot easier to work on Cloud Foundry from, uh, in, a, in a free way from your own environment given the new latest Kubernetes options. So wrapping those things up, um, I mean, as Myrna said, uh, there are, of course, a lot of people very friendly and helpful to get you started with this. There are also a lot of companies doing, earning their money with that and can help you uh, with getting your environment up and running and, and move forward with this. So a couple of lists is compiled on this page. And with that, I'm, I'm pretty much done here. So the only final thing I want to say is a particular thanks to, to Steve Greenberg. He's like a fellow um, ambassador. He's done most of the work on that Catacoda and new tutorial thing. Basically, Catacoda is accessible to everyone now. The tutorials you can pretty much do on, on any cloud-found environment that you have. 
And he was the major contributor to that and has done a lot in the space of getting people started with Cloud Foundry. So thanks for this. And now I'm gonna open up the line for some, um, for some questions. Thank you.